Hi everyone, welcome back to Investing Club. In this video, we're gonna talk about three stocks that do well during a stock market crash and during a recession and a slowdown in the US economy. As you probably know, I'm someone that doesn't think too highly of the US economy right now. So lately I've been spending a ton of time researching these types of companies whose businesses actually flourish when economic times are bad. So in this video, we're gonna go over three of these different counter cyclical stocks that I think could make sense to add to your portfolio. So for these businesses, the first thing we're gonna do is actually take a look at how the business operates, what they actually do as a business that will allow them to make more money when the economy is doing bad. And then we're gonna take a look at the fundamentals of these businesses to assess their health and their ability to generate cash going forward over the next couple of years. So here is the first stock. The first stock is Easy Corp. Their ticker is EZPW. And Easy Corp is one of the largest pawn shop operators in the US and in Mexico. So like I said, first let's take a look at how the business operates and then we'll come back to take a look at the fundamentals. So here we are on the company's investor presentation. And like I said, they have over a thousand pawn shops, over 500 in the USA and over 350 in Mexico. And they are positioned for growth with the economy we're in right now, they have a strong balance sheet, which we'll get to later in this video. And they've shown their ability to operate through entire economic cycles, which will help them out a lot going forward. And so this is a recession resilient business. During times when most businesses are closed down, pawn shops are actually considered an essential business. So they actually are able to stay open while a lot of other businesses were ordered to close down. Over 99% of their stores were open as of the end of July. And again, even if we have more shutdowns in the future, that's going to stay in place for this company. So here is the real case for why pawn shops are likely to do good in the next couple of years. The state of the consumer, these are some of the different trends that have been going on in the economy where we have jobless claims skyrocketing, consumer confidence at a multi-year low, retail sales took a big dive even though they have recovered somewhat, and the US GDP has just tanked. So all of these things are awful for the economy and what it's going to result in is a lot of people out of jobs and a lot of people out of cash. And so if people need quick cash, what's one of the places they go to are pawn shops where they can get pawn shop loans or they can exchange belongings like like jewelry or gold and silver for money. And so right now what's happening in the economy is we're being kept afloat by all the stimulus money that's been that's been approved by the government. Or you have a ton of money being thrown around for unemployment, for stimulus checks, but these programs will expire eventually. And we're even seeing that now with the government disagreeing on what kind of stimulus to continue going forward. And so once these all run out, a lot of people are going to, to be in the position again where they need cash and one of the places they will be going to are pawn shops. So now let's take a look at some of the fundamentals of those business. The thing I like most about them, they are in a very good financial position in the short term. Their current ratio is a five. So they have five times as more current assets as current liabilities. And they are also very conservative on debt. Their debt to equity is only a 0.36. So in terms of the health of this business, really nothing I'm concerned about. And it's actually quite good for a business that is considered retail. This is a balance sheet that's much better than most of its other retail competitors. Now, not only is this a very healthy business, but in terms of valuation, it's trading at an extremely cheap valuation where the valuation is under half of the book value and it's actually less than the net cash value of the shares. So right now there's around $5.72 per share in cash that the company owns, but the stock is only priced at $5.48 per share. So what that means is for every share that you buy this company, you're entitled to more cash than what you just paid for the share. The price of free cash flow is a five, so that's a 20% free cash flow yield you're getting buying these shares at this price. And if we look at the long-term chart to see the potential of this company, and here's the long-term chart. If you take a look at the last recession we had, 2008, 2009, 2010, back in 2011, this was almost a $40 stock. And obviously since then it's underperformed as the economy has been doing extremely well. But now we're back at $5 and I think there's a potential for the stock to go up a huge amount as the demand for services like pawn shops increase dramatically as the stimulus money runs out and people need somewhere to turn to for cash. And this wasn't even mentioned in the presentation, but another thing that's going to help this company out a huge amount is what the price of gold has been doing. Because a large portion of the revenues from pawn shops is for customers that trade in gold for cash. And so gold has been on a tear lately, but the thing is for the average person that goes into a pawn shop that's giving up any gold jewelry they have because they need cash, you know, do they know what's been happening with the price of gold over the past few months? Probably not. And so because of that, this company is gonna be able to get that gold at a huge discount to the spot price, and then they'll be able to flip it and sell it for a premium 
which will help out this company's margins a ton. And so the better the price of gold does, the better off it is for this company. So overall, I like this stock a lot because of the huge potential I see this company having in the future. And even right now, even if we don't see the huge surge in demand for pawn shops, this company is still undervalued. And I still see the potential for the stock to double to get up to around $10 with not really much of a change of anything. This company has been profitable. They are undervalued right now, no matter which way you look at it. And so this is one I would take a good look at. So the second stock we're going to be looking at is Office Properties Income Trust. The ticker is OPI, and this is a REIT that owns and rents out office space. And that's probably going to scare a lot of people away talking about office space when there's all this talk about work from home and remote working where a lot of people are expecting the demand for office space to fall. However, this company is unique because the majority of the tenants are from an organization that will probably always use office space and they are some of the most credit worthy tenants in the entire world. So here we are in the OPI investor presentation for the past quarter. And so, like I said, they're a REIT focused on leasing office properties to single tenants and those with high quality, high credit quality like government entities. So that's what I was talking about with this company. Their largest tenant is actually the government. So most of their property is owned in the Washington DC area. And naturally that's where there's going to be a ton of government employees. 39% of their tenants are with the government. And so if you take a look at their risk profile, 63% of their tenants are investment grade. And that is one of the highest percentages of any REIT. Again, this is so high because almost 40% of their tenants are the government, which is one of the most credit worthy customers in the world. The government's not going to miss their rent payments. Their tenants are also state governments like the state of California, um, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and they also have a lot of well-known corporations like Allstate Insurance and Automatic Data Processing. So like I said, the government has some of the most superior credit out of any out of any customer in the world. They have stable cash flow, and these are also super long-term leases with the government where they have leases of 10 to 20 years. So that's 10 years of dependable payments for these office buildings. So even though there's a lot of short-term fear about the future of office space, this company is covered because their largest tenant has agreed to stay in place for at least the next 10 to 20 years. Now this company's leverage is actually below their target. So their net debt to EBITDA is only 5.9 times, which is just under the six to six and a half times. Uh, targeted range. So if we take a look at some of the fundamentals of this company, not really much to talk about in terms of fundamentals. Their price to book is only a 0.7. They have 1.3 times debt to equity, which does mean they have quite a lot of debt. But in terms of REITs, that's actually on the lower side from what I've seen. And again, like I said, it's not as big of a deal since the government is their largest customer and the government's not going to miss any rent payments. Another thing is the dividend. This stock pays a monster dividend over 9% right now. And as of now, I think that dividend is going to stay in place where there's not really a reason to cut that dividend. The cash flows are still strong for this company. And if you look at the stock price, it's still very beaten down from where we were at the beginning of the year. Where back in January, the stock was trading at around $34 and right now we're down at 24. Back in March, the low of the stock was under $18. So I think this is still a very good price to buy into this company. So if you're looking for a REIT that has very reliable tenants, isn't overly leveraged on debt and is paying a huge dividend, OPI is definitely a stock for you to take a look at. And so here we have the last stock, the one I've talked about the most on this channel, Altasource Portfolio Solutions. The ticker is ASPS and Altasource is a company that performs foreclosure services. So whenever one of these big mortgage companies has a customer that isn't paying their mortgage, they've defaulted on their loans, they send that loan over to Altasource and they and there they start the foreclosure process. And I've talked before about some of the huge potential of this company and here is what the management lays out for 2021. So the majority of these forbearance programs expire between April and June of 2021. So that's the second quarter of next year. And right now there's hardly any foreclosures in the real estate space because the government have basically put a moratorium on evictions and foreclosures. So right now no one's really able to be foreclosed on, but that is expected to stop around next year. And I think it's at that point where we'll start to see a turning point for this company. Where next year the management's projecting to bring in between 250 and 270 million of service revenue, and that is around 40 million of EBITDA. So if we take a look at this company's market cap right now, the company's currently worth just around 130 million. And so if this company brings in 250 million in revenue next year, you know, whatever multiple you want to put on that, it, it definitely should be over a one time sales. So that just shows how cheaply this company is valued compared to the expected cash flow they are going to bring in. And this is the stock I think that has the highest potential to just absolutely explode if the economy gets bad. 
So if we take a look at the long-term chart back in the last recession, which of course was especially hard on real estate, this stock went up like crazy. The stock went from where right where we are now around $10 in 2010, and it ran all the way up to just about $170 before falling back down. And obviously since then it's been underperforming as the housing market has been historically strong. But like I said, I think now we're at an inflection point where we're going to see delinquencies and foreclosures start to rise again. And all it's going to take is for the delinquency rate to tick up by a few percentage points. And that equates to millions of dollars in revenue for Altasource. Something else they've been doing is they've been buying back a ton of their shares. They bought back around half of their entire float from the 2010 to 2013 period. And so that's absolutely huge where if we see a jump in this company's earnings and revenues. You know, the earnings per shares number are just are going to be in effect twice as high as they were back in 2012, 2013, because now they only have half the number of shares. So again, another factor for the bull case for this stock. And so this is the only one of these three companies that I currently have a position in. Like I said, I think this one has the most potential. And even if nothing happens, even if we don't see a takeoff in the amount of foreclosure, this company still looks pretty attractive at $10. Back in 2019, this company was pretty much trading at around $20 all year. So right now the stock is half off from where it was last year. And and I think we could return to that just given that the government actually allows foreclosures to happen again so this company can make some money. So those are three stocks I'm looking at that I think have the potential to do very well during a recession and a stock market crash. Let me know what you think. Obviously this isn't financial advice but I'm just showing you a couple ideas to help protect your portfolio during a time where the economy could easily go bad and a lot of the other stocks you own could go down a lot as well. So let me know if you're thinking about any of these companies and let me know if you've seen any other good picks of stocks that could go up when the economy does bad. I'd love to hear, I'd love to get some more names to research. So be sure to let me know down in the comments if you have any. And so that's it for this video. If you like these stock picks, hit the like button. It really helps out my channel and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit the bell icon so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. And with that, I hope to see you on the next video.